week we're going to talk about return predictability and volatility, uh, taking up some issues we did in the very first week of the class and looking at them in greater detail and also building some tools that will turn out to be very useful. Let me start by grounding you with three facts that are going to be the centers of what we're going to try to integrate and explain. Uh, the first fact, uh, returns are predictable, especially at long horizon. As a reminder of that fact, I put up the, uh, a set of regressions from the discount rates paper, which we looked at the first week. These are regressions of returns on dividend yields at a one-year and then five-year horizon. And as we looked at before, these are big. Now, how do we see big? The T statistics are uh, above the magic two, though not particularly dramatic. The economic significance of the coefficients is really what makes this uh, more interesting, something we're going to really look at in great deal today. One way of seeing it, the coefficient 3.8 means that a 1% rise in dividend yields doesn't just give you a 1% rise in returns, it gives you a 3.8% rise in returns. Uh, that's a lot more than you might think. The R squared isn't that interesting. Uh, 0.09 doesn't look that great until you start getting used to this sort of thing. and You realize that forecasting stock returns with any R squared is big. The five-year, the long horizon returns were, were primarily important because you, you see the R squared there. That makes it See, you understand the economic significance of the phenomenon uh, better, the 0.28. And this graph here, which we looked at before, dramatizes uh, the R squared. Here I have the dividend yield, three times the dividend yield, and in the uh, red, the actual returns that followed. And you can see how uh, high dividend yields means high subsequent returns, low dividend yields means low subsequent returns. And as, as we saw before, there's a suggestive correlation with economic events. Um, Bad economic times lead to low prices and lead to high subsequent returns. The risk premium for holding risk in bad economic times seems high. Also, uh, as a measure of economic significance, R squared divides the variance of the expected return by the variance of the actual return. The variance of the actual return isn't that good a standard, but the standard deviation of the expected return itself is surprisingly high. Uh, the standard deviation of the expected return, the right-hand side of the regression, is at one year 5.46 percentage points out of about 7 percentage point mean. So it's varying by as much as its size. Uh, that's economically uh, big. <clears throat> Second fact uh, that, we, or that grounds what we're going to do today is that uh, dividends are not predictable. So uh, this is also, uh, this is from... Uh, financial markets and the real economy. Uh, this is the return forecast, slightly different uh, data source, uh, but you've seen that one before. Com compared to that, this is the dividend growth forecast. What happens if we try to forecast dividend growth with price dividend ratios? And you see nothing there. Dividend growth just isn't forecastable. Uh, the R squared is tiny, the T is tiny. The sign is wrong. What you would expect is a high price relative to today's dividends to tell you tomorrow's dividends would be higher. Or conversely, a negative sign, a high dividend yield, says tomorrow's dividends should be lower. In fact, it's the other way around. So, so we're not even seeing the sign that we ought to see. Uh, the graph down below, you've seen that, that, um, that, that kind of puts these facts together. What we were expecting, if you see prices fall below dividends, what you might have expected before is, oh, that means dividends will fall in the future. This is the dividend growth forecastability and doesn't really mean much about returns. What we're seeing in the facts is that a low price relative to dividends means nothing about where dividends are going to go, but means prices or, or returns will be high. So in that sense, it's, it's changed our, our view of what varying prices means uh, 100%. That's an economically large uh, change. Uh, fact, uh, fact three in this, uh, things, things that we're trying to put together uh, this week, uh, is volatility. So this graph is from uh, Bob Schiller's uh, 90, uh, 1981 AR paper, uh, the, the graph that pretty much got him the Nobel Prize, and rightly so. Um, P star is what uh, Bob called the ex post rational price. I've given the equation version here. It is simply the discounted future dividends discounted at a, at a constant rate. Now, these are the actual future dividends. So that's what the price should be if you knew what the dividends were going to be in the future. That's P star. And you can see, as you might expect, a, a slow moving average of anything is going to be very smooth. P is the actual price. 
So you see the actual price varies by way more than the ex post rational price. Now that seems weird. And it's weird in equations as well as in words. The, the actual price should be the expected value of the ex post rational price. But as these equations show, the, the, the expectation of something should always vary less than that thing itself. So this was the idea of the variance bounds tests, that the variance of P star, the ex post rational price, uh, should be, um, in fact, less than the, the it should be uh, greater than the variance of actual prices. But in fact, what we see is, is exactly the opposite in an enormously big. So why do prices vary so much? Uh, it, it still is, is a puzzle. I, I get newspaper reporters calling me once a week saying, oh, the market went up 10% or went down 10% last week. That, that can't possibly be rational. This volatility of prices seems like a separate observation that they can't be efficient or that, or that something's wrong. Um, well, what we'll find out is that, is that, in fact, these ideas are all uh, tied together, and, and that's our job. Tie together, returns are predictable, dividend growth is not predictable, prices seem astonishingly too volatile. What does this all mean?